Nearly five years ago, 5G became reality. Its initial focus on enhanced mobile broadband in release 15 was soon followed in releases 16 and 17 with enhancements to address new market segments. Ultra-high reliability and time synchronization enabled native support of industrial IoT. And new low-complexity devices, sometimes referred to as NR Lite, bring the benefits of 5G to smart consumer wearables. In release 80, 5G Advanced is born realizing the full vision of 5G. Massive MIMO with precise and powerful beamforming takes network capacity and user experience data rates to new heights. And speaking of height, 5G advanced drones can be controlled so that they don't cause interference to ground-based users. Mobility enhancements minimize the interruptions as users move through the network at speed, as well as minimizing the time taken to connect to additional capacity cells when needed. The critical reliability of 5G Advanced will enable the railways to upgrade from their old 2G-based networks to new broadband control. And moving beyond simply data transmission, carrier phase positioning, standardised for the first time in a terrestrial cellular communication system, enables devices to be located with centimetre level accuracy, whether they're indoors or outdoors while resilient timing can now be conveyed over a 5G advanced network in the absence of GPS. Now, just after the 25th anniversary of the establishment of 3GPP, we have taken an exciting new step. Last week, the work plan for release 19 was announced, the last major release of 5G advanced, which will both fine tune what's possible with 5G advanced and start to build the foundations of a bridge for a smooth evolution to 6G. Let's talk first about the role of Release 19 in fine-tuning 5G Advanced, the culmination of a journey to build the most capable and flexible mobile network ever. Firstly, XR, Extended Reality, promises new levels of information at our fingertips. For consumers, we're on the cusp of seeing virtual reality help us to navigate through our busy lives and similar functionality will enable the industrial metaverse to diagnose problems and visualise solutions in record time. All this requires the networks to have real-time awareness of the required quality of service of the different data flows to enable differentiated traffic handling within tight latency budgets. And Release 19 will boost the number of XR users that can be supported in each cell. Secondly, there will be important savings on the overall network energy consumption, reducing transmission overheads when they're not needed by user devices, and also introducing the ability to supervise services in an energy-aware manner with tight control of energy use. Thirdly, as quantum computing poses a long-term threat to information security, Release 19 will bring enhanced 256-bit confidentiality and integrity algorithms to ensure that we have secure communications well into the future. And there will also be further enhancements for mobility, for 5G femtocells, and for satellite-based non-terrestrial networks. All this will bring unprecedented performance, efficiency and security to commercial mobile network operators, as well as to private enterprises deploying their own 5G advanced networks in their premises and campuses. Let's move on to take a look at the second aspect of last week's announcement. Release 19 will take what we've learned from the 5G journey and start to study some aspects of how a new 6G system can be built even better. We could call this the beginning of the bridge to 6G. That's not to say that 6G is just around the corner. We don't expect the first version of the 6G specifications to be complete until the end of 2028, leading to deployments in 2030. So 5G advanced networks will continue to serve us well for some years to come. But these are complex systems, and we need to take the time to get the directions right for 6G. First, there's artificial intelligence and machine learning, AI and ML. We're learning now how to use AI ML to optimise beam management, channel state feedback and device positioning, as well as to save energy in the network and to automate the optimization of the network configuration. In Release 19, 3GPP will be developing standards for AIML in these areas, 
including full life cycle management of the AIML models that have to be trained and refined by collecting observations. And we'll need to define a new framework of performance requirements to ensure that AIML always brings improvements. And if it encounters scenarios where performance can't be guaranteed, it can fall back to more conventional operation. And we'll also be looking at how AIML can bring benefits in handling mobility. Then there's the matter of new spectrum. As data traffic over the radio interface continues to increase in both uplink and downlink, new spectrum will be required to ensure that we have sufficient capacity. The most promising new spectrum is in the 7 to 15 gigahertz range. And the four yearly World Radio Congress has just agreed last week to address allocation of spectrum in that range for IMT use. To be ready for this, 3GPP has agreed to work on validation and refinement of its radio channel model for these frequencies. While we're looking at radio channel modelling, we're also going to take the opportunity to create models for how the radio signals can be used for sensing and not merely for communication. Integrated sensing and communication is an interesting potential use case for 6G networks at some point in the future, with applications ranging from tracking of drones to detection of intruders. So, with the fine-tuning of 5G Advance and the start of the bridge to 6G, the specification work of the next 18 months will have a powerful impact on mobile communication networks for the rest of this decade and beyond.